Singapore is well known for being a worldwide financial hub. Being one of the most densely inhabited cities in the world, boasting a world-class city airport with a waterfall, and having a World Heritage Site Botanic Garden, and so much more. Hence, in today's video, we will be talking about the city of luxury, Singapore. And if you're new here on Luge Fluent, you came to the right channel, for we will surely help you hop onto the latest trends in luxury and lifestyle. Oh, and if you discover something helpful from this video, it would be lovely if you subscribe, so you'll always be the first to hear about new videos like this as they become released. So, how about we keep going? The city we recognize today is based on recent history. In truth, the swamp-covered island was once known as Pu Lua Chong, which refers to the Malay Pulau Ujong, the island at the tip of the peninsula. As trade established a foothold on the island and the population developed, Tema Sek or Sea Town was born. Although it wasn't until the 1800s that Sir Thomas Stamford Raffles sought to capitalize on the region's exceptional sea access. The city soon flourished from here on, becoming a haven for sea traders, and in 1822, the Raffles Town Plan split the city into the full ethnic areas that we see today. The European Quarter, Chinatown, Little India, and the Muslim Quarter are all popular destinations. There is a Raffles Hotel there, coined after the founder of modern-day Singapore. The original structure began as a privately owned beach house in the 1830s before being rebuilt by two Armenian brothers into a 10-bedroom, ultra-luxury, high-quality hotel in the late 1880s. From the start, the hotel would solely cater to the most affluent clients. It was in fact among the first in the region to install electrical lighting and ceiling fans. Numerous restorations occurred prior to the 1900s resulting in the hotel that many of us are fortunate to be acquainted with today. Guests may see the grounds and the magnificent decor influenced by British colonialism from the Raffles' choice of pleasant verandas. The meticulously chosen and customized furniture is all made from a range of raw materials. Natural elements such as wood, stone, glass, textiles, and some metals contributed to the sense of seamless grandeur. Guests may also enjoy a Singapore Sling, a gin-based beverage created by bartender Nyam Tong Boon at the Raffles' very own bar. Somerset Mom, Joseph Conrad, and Rudyard Kipling were among the early visitors and admirers of the Raffles' soothing atmosphere. Recently, the hotel closed its doors for two years. A substantial restoration in 2017 added 12 rooms, bringing the total to 115. The restaurants and bars were renovated and the theater was converted into a larger ballroom. A fresh marble floor was built which is a modest but costly touch that helped bring the hotel back to its early days. Presently, the two presidential suites at the forefront of the hotel, named after the Armenian brothers, both impart a very modest impression, emphasizing comfort above opulence. The 260 square meter interior has two bedrooms, a living room and dining room, a marble-coated bathroom, and a private terrace. The cost is $7,500 per night. The Raffles retain subtlety and deliver easy comfort. However, for many, it simply does not speak loudly enough, and these individuals are more inclined to stay at the Marina Bay Sands Resorts. When this work of contemporary art was finished in 2010, it housed the world's most costly standalone casino complex, which cost an outstanding $7 billion. Only a short distance from Singapore's 120-mile shoreline, the breathtaking design includes 355-story towers above which sits an awe-aspiring ship-shaped platform. 
the 1 hectare sky park can accommodate about 4,000 people, 191 meters above ground level, as well as a few more in the 146 meter long infinity pool built of 191 metric tons of stainless steel. This pool has a capacity of over 1.5 million liters. Only from the ground level can one properly appreciate it as the world's biggest cantilevered platform, extending 7 meters further beyond North Tower. Many tourists like perusing the downstairs area, which includes a 74,000 square meter mall and a 120,000 square meter convention exhibition center. The world famous The Shops Mall houses some of the most luxurious stores in the world. We're talking about Chanel, Breitling, and Hermes here. If you want to avoid the masses, book a private reservation at one of the six celebrity chef restaurants managed by Gordon Ramsay, Wolfgang Puck, Tetsuya Wakuda, Mario Batali, David Thompson, or Daniel Bolad. There is also a museum, a theater, and a casino with 500 tables and 1,600 slot machines. Although there are over 2,500 rooms, nothing beats the range-stopping Chairman's Suite, which costs $17,000 and is the most costly suite in the city. There are three guest rooms, a master suite with his and her baths, a couple of living rooms with a baby grand piano, a kitchenette, a dining space, and a study room inside the 600 square meter space. The outside features three furnished balconies and the relaxation amenities include a private gym, massage rooms, sauna, and steam room. This room like the Raffles' two top-tier suites, offers 24-hour access to a personal butler. The most expensive restaurant in Singapore can be situated inside the shops at Marina Bay Sands. The going charge is $500 per person. Waku Jin delivers European and Japanese fusion cuisine prepared by a private chef. Before we proceed, Feel free to share your favorite features of Singapore that we have so far shared in this video. Finished? Now, how about we keep going? You may immerse yourself in the botanic gardens if you need a breather from the city. The tropical paradise, which dates back 161 years, is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It consists of three gardens one of which is a 6-hectare rainforest, one of the first of its sort within the municipal limits. The ginger garden displays some of the world's ginger plants, of which 1,600 species are identified. Flora lovers will appreciate the National Orchid Garden, a pleasant and serene atmosphere that welcomes tourists away from the rush and bustle of city life. From a comfortable sitting seat, you can also see how birds and insects interact with nature in the old colonial plantation bungalow. It's really encouraging to know that children and families may learn about the value of flora and fauna within the garden's library and classroom. While many breeding institutions instill confidence that a significant amount of work is being made to secure the survival of these plants. Golf bridges the gap between exercise and vacation for many people. A great way to stay active, golf also allows visitors to engage with their surroundings and socialize with other players. And Singapore has plenty of options. The Sentosa Golf Club's Serapong Course, which occupies roughly a third of the island of the coast of Singapore's mainland, is routinely ranked as a favorite golf course by lovers of the sport. It is guarded by Fort Cirebon, which was originally part of the city's defense. At the World Golf Awards, it was named the best golf club in Southeast Asia, as well as the best golf club in the world. The golf course's history is far from dull indeed. 
the course, which opened in 1982, had a costly overhaul in 2006, with state-of-the-art irrigation at the heart of the operation, which cost $9 million. But it wasn't all smooth sailing. A great deal of effort went into making the golf course what it is today. Scuba diving may not be the first thing that comes to mind when you think about Singapore. The churned up seas and considerable boat traffic do not imply ideal diving conditions. That, however, is not the case. The Sudong Wreck, for example, is only 15 meters below the surface and is nearly completely intact. Divers who wish to observe a plethora of corals, sea slugs, turtles, and even sharks continue to flock to Palau Hantu. Because of its ease of access, this is also one of the busiest places. Although there is Palau Jung as another alternative for calmer dives, you must be aware that it is home to reef sharks and whales. A vacation must include a nice night's sleep, delectable cuisine, and some light activities to keep the mind engaged. But Singapore is more than simply a tourist destination. It's also a lively metropolis with over 5.5 million people crammed into 275 square miles of terrain. Being the third most densely inhabited city on the globe, it's simple to understand how living here may be pricey. Singapore has the lowest average pay among the United States and the United Kingdom at $65,000. The UK and the US have $73,000 and $81,000 respectively. Singaporeans pay the most for housing because the land is so expensive. A square meter of city center property costs an average of $19,844, which is half the price outside the center. This can amount to up to 30% of an average worker's wage. The UK pays just 7% at $5,631 per square meter within the city and $4,000 outside, which appears exorbitant when compared to the US average city center pricing of $3,496, which is only 4% of an average wage. When comparing typical incomes, Singapore appears to be more than 7 times more costly to buy property than the United States. Numerous surveys have placed Singapore in the top 10, top 5, and leading spot as the world's most expensive city. We may expect this data to change constantly. Whether you're visiting for a vacation or dreaming of one day residing in Singapore, it's true that perhaps the city ranks among the most extravagant and well-off in the world. Thank you for watching. I hope you gained some inspiration from this video. If you did, remember to hit the notification button and then subscribe to this channel. That way, you will be updated anytime we upload life-changing videos like this. Until next time. See ya!